Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Sorry to be a couple of minutes behind. I want to thank specifically the team here at the Statewide Traffic Management Center for hosting us yet again. Diane. I'm joined by the aforementioned Diane, the Commissioner of the Department of Transportation, Diane gutierrez Scacchetti, the President of the Board of Public Utilities to her right, Joe Fiordaliso, and to my left, the State Police Superintendent, Colonel Pat Callahan. I will leave it to Diane, Joe, and Pat to discuss in greater detail the specific preparations they and their teams are undertaking, but to suffice it to say that we are all ready for whatever comes our way. We're certainly hoping for the best but we are, without question, preparing for the worst. First, I have declared a state of emergency effective for 5 p.m. this evening. Accordingly, on a personal note, I am postponing my travel to Washington, D.C. for the winter meeting of the National Governors Association to stay here to help oversee our storm response. We are also putting in a commercial vehicle travel restriction also at 5 p.m., uh, effective 5 p.m. today. To give you a sense of the scale and the need for coordination, Diane and her counterparts uh, are on a call at noon to discuss preparations, and her counterparts in this case include New York, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts, uh, to give you a sense of the need for coordination and the scale of this storm. And they will finalize details to ensure proper coordination on safe interstate travel to the greatest extent possible. I'm also uh, dismissing all state uh, offices and employees effective at 3 p.m. today, 3 p.m. today, to get those folks home before uh, the rush hour. So we are, not surprisingly, we are preparing for a significant statewide snow event. And as with our previous coastal storm, the New Jersey Turnpike is serving as somewhat of a dividing line. Monmouth, Ocean, Eastern Burlington, Atlantic, and Cape May counties are all under a blizzard warning, which is a rare level, uh, but it is a blizzard warning. Sussex and War Warren counties are under a winter storm watch. Again, Monmouth, Ocean, Eastern Burlington, Atlantic, and Cape May counties are under a blizzard warning. The rest of the state is all under a winter storm warning. The worst of this storm is going to be felt in the eastern half of our state. As you move east from the turnpike, snow totals are anticipated to increase from 6 to 8 to 8 to 12, and then ultimately a foot to 18 inches along the shore from Monmouth County right all down to Cape May. And if that's not enough, we're also expecting strong and potentially damaging winds of up to 50 miles per hour. For those of you west of the turnpike, snow totals will mostly fall to between three to four inches in the northwest corners to closer to the center. And again, it goes sort of you, you've got four bands in the state, northwest three to four, then you come in four to six, come in again eight to 12, and then 12 to 18 along the shore. I was just on the phone with the FEMA administrator, Deanne Criswell, and not just in New Jersey, but this is a coastal first storm. Our advice to everyone is to be prepared to hunker down once you get home this afternoon and stay home. Stay home tonight and stay home tomorrow. Whatever you may need to get through a snow day, get it on your way home today so you do not have to venture out. We already expect tough, tough travel conditions and low visibility due to the blowing snow and the high winds, and those conditions could deteriorate quickly. So let's leave the roads empty for all the road crews to do their jobs. And if you see a road crew getting into position or working, please let them have the right of way. Give them the road ahead of you. As Diane has mentioned many times before, our highway crews especially work in formation. So allowing them to get in front of you unimpeded is not just appreciated, but it is necessary. And I think we're going to also have to ask you all for a big dose of patience because this storm, as Diane and her colleagues reminded me, uh, is going to have a long tail. Even though the sun may be shining on Sunday, we're going to, be, we're going to need some time to dig out from this thing. That will also go for the utilities, which I'll get to in a second. The Department of Transportation has also been coordinated with NJ Transit, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, the toll road authorities, and our regional partners, as I mentioned, to ensure everyone's on the same page. On NJ Transit, you're just going to have to look up for service, njtransit.com, njtransit.com. We are also concerned 
um, not surprisingly, given the high winds for the potential to bring down power lines. If you lose power, don't assume somebody else is calling it in. Report it to your utility immediately. If you see a down power line, stay clear of it. Don't go near it, and again, call it in. Please remain mindful that while our electric utilities will try to restore power as quickly as possible, weather conditions at any given moment could prevent utility crews from getting up in a bucket safely. I think, Joe, you'll agree that if it's over 40 miles an hour, they're not going up, nor should they. And as much as we want to get your power back on, that's putting their uh, health and safety at risk. Joe has been in touch with all three of the big uh, power uh, providers, as have I, uh, JCP&L, Atlantic City Electric, PSE&G. Uh, again, I think you've got largely the JCP&L Southern region and ACE, Atlantic City Electric, which are the most exposed. I know uh, Doug Mokoid at uh, Atlantic City Electric is particularly concerned about Cape May County. Also, given the anticipated frigid conditions tonight and tomorrow, if you lose your power and heat, there are warming stations pat statewide. I know you'll hit this, so visit nj211.org or for details on code, code blue notifications and resources available in response to the severe cold. We thank in advance everyone who's going to be on call and working during the storm to keep our state safe, the DOT, partner authority and agencies, county and local crews, the utility crews, police, including the state police, fire, EMTs, and every first responder. One, I guess, better than it was last time we stood at this podium, the COVID reality, the Omicron reality has gotten meaningfully better, thank God, so we are less stressed in terms of crew and manpower than we were a few weeks ago. That's obviously still a consideration, but I think we'd all agree we're less stressed. The Office of Emergency Management will post regular updates at ready.nj.gov. For me, that's the best place to go, ready.nj.gov. And on their social media channels, we'll also keep everyone updated on our official state channels, including at NJGov on Twitter. With that, please help me welcome the Commissioner of the Department of Transportation, Diane gutierrez Scacchetti. Good morning. Um, obviously, you just heard, and I'm not going to repeat everything the governor said about the actual predictions for this storm. Uh, let's suffice it to say that it's going to be very significant. Um, and as transportation agencies, the one thing we ask is that for those who do not have to use the roadways during the storm, we appreciate you staying home and allowing us the space to get the roads cleared. Um, we have all prepared um, significantly for this. We had lots of notice of this storm. We were able to brine on Wednesday and Thursday the entire DOT transportation network. Um, we have been in touch with all our plowing and spreading contractors. We're not, they have not reported any issues with COVID that would re, uh, keep them from responding to us and being out there with us. Um, we ourselves, as terms of staff, as the governor said, the numbers have gone way down. So I know that other states and some of you have asked us about um, our COVID response. COVID is not going to play a role in our ability to respond to this storm. We have checked out all of our equipment. Everybody's ready to go. We will pre-position sometime later today. Um, as you know, the track of the storm is pretty confident now, but you know, if it moves a little bit e either way, we'll get many forecasts between now and the start time. Um, our pre-positioning time will be based on the most recent forecast. As far as the high winds and flooding, we'll be there to support our, our colleagues at BPU um, and their uh, utility companies in trying to restore power. Um, we have checked our <clears throat> Uh, pumping stations and our generators to, on along the shore to make sure that we're ready to help them if there's any flooding that occurs. As the governor said, we are coordinating with our neighboring states. It's very helpful when we do any kind of vehicle ban to be able to make sure we're all on the same page. We know where we're, we're, what we're trying to accomplish. Very simple. The fewer large trucks on our roads in the midst of this storm, the fewer opportunities for them to jackknife or slide and cause an accident and then tie up folks for any period of time. I mean, it's not, easy, it's not easy to move them on a dry road, let alone to move them in the middle of a storm. We do have NJ511 Connect that will be ready to go. Uh, NJ511 Connect is a service that we're able to provide not just to DOT roads, but to our toll road partners, where we can essentially you know, geofence a section where we have congestion or we have a, a backup. 
um, and communicate with the drivers uh, via their cell phones. Um, that will be available. We used it uh, last week when we had the fire on the parkway. It'll be available for during this storm as well. And then we partner with Colonel Callahan and his team to respond to anyone who may be in distress as a result of being stuck in a, in a backup. Um, it is phenomenal technology, um, better than we've had uh, in a long time. For transit, uh, as Gov said, the best thing you can do is go to njtransit.com. They've issued a press release telling you they're going to cross honor. So all that information is out there and available to you. Um, they'll make service adjustments again throughout the day. So for anyone who needs to use New Jersey Transit, uh, we ask that you just go to NewJerseyTransit.com before you leave your house to make sure that you'll be able to, to you know, get on the route you're looking for, get on the train you're hoping to, to use. Um, but it's early for them to start making true service adjustments at this time. So please make sure you go to that website. Um, as the Gov said, this storm is going to have a tail. What does that mean? Well, once we get the, the lanes open, we still have to push back shoulders and make sure that we have places for emergency vehicles to pass that drivers who have car trouble to pull into. So we'll be working mostly through the weekend to make sure all of that gets done. The message I give all the time is the same one I'm going to give now. When you see people out there working lights on on the shoulder, we ask you if you can safely to move over one lane. It really isn't a request, it is the law. If you cannot move over, we need you to slow down. Across the country, we've already lost a significant number of first responders, uh, tow truck drivers, uh, law enforcement, uh, first aid, fire. We need to make sure that we protect those folks because you never know the day that each of us may need them. Um, and so we ask that you get that message out. Uh, I said to someone yesterday, when the speed's posted at 55, it's the speed limit. It means you can go slower. And I would suggest with the weather coming in, you manage your speed, you manage the time you leave your home, and you manage the distance between you and the cars in front of you. Um, it takes a lot longer to stop on a wet road or an icy road or a snow-covered road than it does on a dry road. We have a motto at DOT, everybody goes home every night. We have that same motto as it applies to those who work and live and play in New Jersey and use our roadway system. So the biggest thing I can ask of all of you is to be safe. We are well prepared to fight this storm at all the transportation agencies in the state. We ask you to be well prepared when you go home, and we ask that you just be safe and keep help us keep our folks safe. Thanks. Thank you, Diane. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Diane, and thank you, as always, for hosting us so graciously. Please help me welcome the Superintendent of the State Police, Colonel Pat Callahan. Thanks, Governor. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'll be brief. Uh, I'll start with saying the first, uh, first person I heard from this morning was the FEMA Region 2 Administrator, Chad Gorman. Uh, as always, that partnership remains phenomenal and reached out and said, what do you need? Uh, we did ask for a liaison officer from FEMA, so that person's been assigned already and will be at the SEOC through the overnight. Uh, that is activating at 6 o'clock uh, tonight. Uh, the last two days, we've spent a considerable amount of time on the phone with the National Weather Service in both Upton and Mount Holly. Uh, we were on with them this morning at 10. I will be on with them at 1 with all 21 county OEM coordinators and our state partners. Um, again, just phenomenal communication and collaboration. Uh, we're going to fully staff that SEOC, as I said, starting at 6 tonight. Uh, I will say that some of our vaccination mega sites will not provide services tomorrow due to the magnitude of this storm. Uh, and we ask that folks monitor the uh, COVID-19 information hub, uh, COVID-19, which is at nj.gov. I'm sure you're familiar with that. To the governor and commissioner's point, we will have that incline readiness package ready to go. I think they're going to be in place by 10 o'clock tonight at all of those elevated uh, parts of 80, 78, 280 where we traditionally have issues uh, we trust that the commercial travel restrictions will help us on those uh, elevated highways uh, and as always our urban search and rescue team uh, task force one will be ready with uh, high water vehicles uh, and certainly snowmobiles which may be uh, certainly may be used uh, as far as social media and the messaging for this um, beyond ready.nj.gov that the governor mentioned, uh, Twitter at ReadyNJ, Facebook at Ready New Jersey, as well as Instagram at Ready New Jersey. 
Uh, certainly our folks in OEM will be monitoring any resource requests that come in from municipalities and or counties. Uh, they know to use uh, a particular system, so we track every single hour and piece of equipment in the event that this may rise to a federal declaration, which is tough with snowstorms, but it doesn't mean that we don't track all that information if reimbursements from FEMA become available. We do have troopers embedded in all 21 counties uh, working with their county OEM offices. Uh, and again, I just ask and echo the remarks, if you don't have to be out, uh, stay home. It'll be a good Saturday uh, and Sunday to stay home. And I'll close with, again, I believe all, just about all 21 counties are under a code blue, given not only the storm, but the low temperatures. And that is nj211.org, as the governor mentioned. If you need a warming center, if your power goes out and you don't have a generator, it's a great place to go. And, and again, I take this opportunity to uh, say check on any any neighbors that uh, you know need additional services or certainly the elderly it's going to be a tough long storm uh, and although you can't pick your neighbors it's important to uh, to work with one another through these storms so stay safe everybody thanks governor I just asked Pat to confirm that we're not hearing a lot as it relates to potential coastal flooding notwithstanding the high winds and the blizzard conditions on all of our shore counties. Uh, please help me welcome the President of the Board of Public Utilities, Joe Fiordalisa. Joe. Thank you, Governor, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're in constant contact with our utilities throughout the year, but especially during situations like this. The areas that are going to be hit, and the, and the Governor alluded to this, is the fact that um, the southern portion of the JCPNL service area and Atlantic City Electric are going to be the two utilities that are affected the most. And one of the things that's going to affect them, obviously the heavy snow, but also the winds. When you're getting gusts up to 50 or 60 miles per hour, you can expect power outages to occur. These people are going to be working throughout the night to try to restore power, if it does go out, as quickly as possible. But there are safety concerns that we have to look at. If those winds exceed 40 miles per hour, it's dangerous for someone to go up in that bucket truck. So I ask your patience and unfortunately, with the way the weather has been, with the cold temperatures and so on, patients can run a little thin. And, and I get that, obviously, because we've all been in situations where our power has gone out and we've lost heat. But it's important, as the Colonel indicated, there are warming centers to help. Do not go, if there are, are power lines on, on the ground, do not go anywhere near them. Call your utility. Call your utility if you lose power. Don't assume your neighbor's going to call them. They have to know exactly where to go and where to start restoring power. So it's imperative that each and every one of us work together to ensure the fact that power is restored as quickly as possible. My concern is along the coast because as, as the governor mentioned, a blizzard warning is unusual in our part of the world. So this has the potential, and we're not trying to scare anyone, just try to be realistic in, in what, what we're looking at, and to ensure the fact that you're all prepared. So stay away from down wires, get your priorities done before this afternoon. I know one of my priorities is, I mentioned uh, to the fellows upstairs where we have to go first, to make sure we can get through the weekend. 
I'm not going to tell you on TV where that is. Um, but it's important. And it's for your safety. Stay safe. Be patient with the utilities, please. These men and women are out there in all kinds of weather trying to restore our power. And snow's not going to deter them. The only thing that will deter them are those high winds. So stay safe. And let's look at the pretty snow as it comes down. And uh, don't think about shoveling it. Thank you. Joe, thank you. Amen to all. We're going to lose Diane to that regional call in literally one minute. Any questions for, that are specific for Diane Scacchetti? Diane, good luck. Thanks. Thank you, and thanks for hosting us. Anybody got anything else? Please. Governor, are you advising businesses, particularly in the eastern half of the state, to shut down to help both employees and to not tempt people to go out of their home? Yeah, I mean, I, I think people should use, whether it's a business or an individual, they should use their common sense. I think you're okay until sort of late afternoon, although we are taking the step to close the state offices at 3 p.m., as I mentioned. Um, but beginning, this is coming in a little bit earlier than we had thought yesterday. So I would say if you can stay home, if you can not go to, not, not open your business, between sort of late afternoon today into Sunday morning, that's probably the smart thing to do. Can, I, can you also speak to what the procedure should be for someone who finds themselves without power and trouble, perhaps someone with a breathing device at home, or you know, how yeah. do they communicate that they, they need priority rescue yeah, pa help? Pa Pat, I'll have you come in here and uh, give me your best thoughts on, on which number or which website. Yeah, if you, after Sandy, we have that register ready site, which is whether it's a ventilator, any type of medical equipment, and that's how our service providers know how to prioritize those individual uh, residents in New Jersey. And that's a, a key piece. Uh, Registerready.nj, uh, if I'm not mistaken. If you just Google Register Ready New Jersey, it'll come up. Okay, I, if I could just add Please. something to that, uh, if I may. As Pat said, the utilities know because people have registered. If someone's on a breathing machine or something of that sort that should be on the list of their utility provider so they will be the first people to be taken care of just as hospitals and nursing homes and things of that sort but it's important and, and this is a very important point and i'm so happy you asked the question if you have anyone in your home who's on any kind of mechanical device it's vitally important that your utility company is aware of that. There are forms to be filled out. There may be certification from a medical professional and so on, but it's important that they know that somebody in that home, if the power goes out, is in danger. So, great question. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Others? Eh, not really. How off? On the uh, excluding New Jerseyans. Yes. Um, Governor, what was the uh, excluding New Jerseyans? I, I heard you laugh, Matt. <laughs> there'll, be a, there'll be a test as to how off topics become over time, I guess. Um, why would the fund not increase the large the application period only extended uh, one month to the end of February? It's increased to the extent we can get, we can find the federal monies. Uh, this is a huge step uh, for those folks who have been previously excluded or who have been frustrated by the, the, the much more onerous federal process. We've got a lot more flexibility with the American Rescue Plan money, uh, and God willing, that'll get money on the street a lot faster. We've said it, it's extended till the end of February or until we hit the $40 million disbursement, whichever comes first. Uh, I say that with some amount of confidence because this is a much more fluid, easier to manage process uh, than the CARES money, the prior federal buckets were. You good? Listen, I just would conclude with this. Th this one is a big one. And we could be wrong, but I don't think we are wrong. I think the confidence from the National Weather Service in, in the forecasting is very high on this. 
Again, if you're in the northwest part of the state, it's probably a three to four inch reality. If you start coming down, it goes up to six to eight, eight to 12, 12 to 18 along the shore counties. So high accumulation and high wind, which is a combination that's, uh, that's, that's means this is formidable. So please do everything you can. I'd say by late afternoon today to get yourself stocked up, get inside, stay inside until this thing clears through. It's probably a 24-hour reality. Um, so this is at least until late tomorrow afternoon, but I would say until Sunday to allow, whether it's your utility or the road crews, to get the state back on its feet. Please take this one seriously. Thank you all so much.